We are pleased to have on the phone line a general manager who is right in the thick of things, as all of them were, but this uh, GM in particular because he was, uh, I, I, as you know, I've been doing this draft a long time. I've never really seen somebody take the approach of the best Jalen available for the first two picks in his draft. <laughs> He's a general manager of the Eagles, Howie Roseman. How are you, Howie? I'm good. I didn't realize our third round pick, that was his middle name, too. <laughs> <Is> that... <laughs> Well, it's just the first two. It, it, it looks like you went the best Jalen available, quite frankly. Um, so let's walk. Know, you, know, you know, there's not a lot of Howie's playing in the National Football League. You know, my man Howie Long gone. So you know, I, right. I, I had to go to the next best thing. There's not many Rosemans either. There's not many Rosemans either. Fact. Fact. As Garrick Blunt used to say, facts. That's what he used to say to me, everything I'd say to him. You know, Garrick, you can be ready to play. You go, facts. So let's uh, let's get into it right here. I love that. Let's get into it. Uh, 21st overall, you had your choice of uh, the guy you took, Jalen Rieger, also Justin Jefferson, Brandon Ayuk. Why did you take the uh, the young man out of TCU, uh, 21st overall? What'd you like about him? Man, this was a heck of a receiver draft. Everybody knew that, and uh, it was like going to Dun Dunkin' Donuts and uh, sitting there with your family and picking out the, your favorite donut. You know, you really couldn't go wrong with the amount of talent that they had. And so when we look at this, we try to do things that fit our team, that fit what we have, what we need, and, of course, you know, the evaluation of the player. And all those guys you named, we had a lot of love for those guys, too. They're a heck of a players. They're really good players. But, you know, Jalen, when we, when we thought about Jalen and what he could add to our offense, what his skill set is, you know, this is an explosive guy who can separate on the outside vertically. He can run those goal routes, those post routes. He's good on those jet sweeps. He's good in the backfield. He's a returner, so he's really good with the ball in his hands. He's explosive. You know, when you look at his testing, um, we thought he played a lot faster than the 4.47, and then you see, you know, his unbelievable vertical and broad. And uh, we have some familiar, uh, we, we know his dad, you know, he played for us, Monte. And so we knew the kid uh, really well. And uh, when we think about what a guy like this can do when you have him on the outside, and obviously we got Deshaun. Uh, as, in, as probably the you know one of the best speed receivers in the history of the NFL, and learning from him and um, our intermediate targets, and our tight end room, which we think may be the best in the NFL, and, and Zach and Dallas, and and you know we have Alshon and JJ who we drafted last year, and Miles Sanders, and just the way our quarterback likes to play, and and you could see it going back and watching our tape when he's throwing the ball down the field, and the, it just opens up everything else. And I remember going back about two weeks ago and rewatching some of our season and watching in our first game against the Redskins and there was one play where where D-Jack was streaking down the sideline and our slot receiving Nelson Aguilar was streaking down the middle of the field and the thing that was most apparent to me was Zach Ertz was standing in the middle of the field wide open with his hands raised. Now Carson threw it to Deshaun and caught a touchdown. But, <laughs> but the, some of those things, you know, they, they can just really open up the field. And, uh, you know, I, I learned under Coach Reed, and, and you've seen what he's done with uh, the targets he's got in Kansas City. Yeah, no doubt about that. Everyone wants to obviously replicate that as best as possible with, with speed. But uh, when did Rager have you? Did he have you at hello? Like, was it at the combine? Was it a piece of tape in particular? What, what was it? Well, it was funny because, you know, we really start the process right after the draft. And in May, and in May, um, I knew there was a chance that th this was going to be a loaded. You always hear kind of the – we always try to look a year out and see the strengths of the draft a year out. And we knew it was going to be a really strong receiver draft. So I started watching them. And when you looked at his 18 tape, it was phenomenal. You know, he's a 19-year-old true sophomore, and it was phenomenal. So he really got on the radar of May last year. Um, and then just following him and, and seeing some of the plays that he made that were uh, just really fun to watch. And, you know, I've, we got a Pro Bowl quarterback. So I think it will really benefit from that as well. Yes, you do have a Pro Bowl quarterback. You also know how Here to... we go. Here we go. Well, I mean, Here we you, go. You just walked me into it, Howie. I mean, you know, you're just based. That's an open door. Hello. Hello, Joe. But look, um, I love look at straight man. I love Jalen Hurts. Okay, I love him. We had him on the show about ten days ago. I just love his story. I love everything about him. Those, however, uh, are out there wondering why you would take him when you've given a gajillion dollars, and I think that is the exact amount of money that you have given or, <laughs> or put towards Carson Wentz. Why? Why take Jalen Hurts where you did, Howie? You know, Rich, my job is to do everything I can to make Carson Wentz successful. Yes. We have so much invested in him, and we've shown him with our actions how we feel about him, whether it's about trading up all those picks while it's, you know, giving him the contract extension. 
And I think we've done that. You know, we, we've got a good group of skill position guys. Our offensive line is good. We help him by getting guys like Hargrave and Slay and Roby and re-signing our safeties in free agency. That all helps him. Building a good team is helps him. But my job is to ensure that our team and our, and our organization, we're protected. And that all these guys, you know, our coaches work all these hours. Our players, starting today with the virtual off-season program, put in so much time into the building. Our staff is there all the time. i got to make sure I'm doing everything I can that we can have success. And we're a product of our experiences. And, and I've been in Philly for a long time. And, you know, I saw in 2002, A.J. Feely went 4-2, and two, and we got home field advantage throughout the playoffs. I saw that, you know, Donovan McNabb got knocked out of a championship game and we went to our backup quarterback. I saw in 2005, Donovan went down and we went 5-11. and 11. The next year, we got Jeff Garcia, we won the division. We saw, we won with backups, we won the division with Vic and Nick as backups. And obviously, you know, over the last few years, um, you know, like Carson leading us to that home field advantage in 2017 and Nick finishing it off. So, you know, I, I feel like just watching what goes on around the league and seeing, you know, even see last year, a couple of teams lost their starting quarterback and they struggled. They struggled a lot. And I, I just got to make sure that we have an opportunity to be successful with our depth. We played eight offensive linemen last year. You know, this is a depth league to win a Super Bowl. Right now, minimum, you got to play 19 games. In the coming years, you'll have a 17th game, so that'll be 20. That's a lot of games. That's a lot of depth. So I say that, and then it's got to be the right player. And, you know, I think what what's really sad for me is that Jalen Hurts is getting lost in this. I, I can get it. You know, you, people can question my sanity and whether it was the right thing to do, right resource to spend. You know, I obviously don't agree with it. That's why we took the second-round pick. But this kid is a heck of a player. He's a heck of a person. He's a huge asset to any team. We're lucky to have him. And I, I just feel bad that, you know, people don't understand how good he is and how good of a teammate he is. Well, I mean, he said that any team that gets him is going to be getting a dog. And we, in, in terms of a teammate, I mean, you saw what he did at Oklahoma last year. He he goes to a team like Oklahoma and says he wanted to help, um, you know, he didn't use the word culture change, but he did want to bring certain um, sense of attitude to the program that he didn't think might have been there. I mean, like, and you, you can buy it from him. You don't think, like, there's anything egotistical about him. He is as dynamite as they come and anybody who might not understand that just needs to google his name and to us right at the same time and you could you could learn all of that but all that said how are you going to use him i mean do, do you plan on 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 even having a package or two Taysom hill type stuff like uh, is that a, in the cards howie you know um i i can't give you the answers to the test that, that's, that's not my job here. I, I can't do that. You know? it, is my, uh, it is my job to find out the answers, uh, though, Howard. I know. I can't, I can't do that. You know, But obviously, <laughs> we, we have a tremendous coaching staff led by a tremendous head coach. And, um, you know, it's, it's our job to get them as any playmakers at their disposal. But, you know, listen, Carson Wentz is a Pro Bowl quarterback. We can win a Super Bowl with him as our starting quarterback. And, you know, we just kind of went through, all right, if we, it's the guys that we had on the board, if we took this position or that position, can we find them? And it, it's always been since Coach Peterson came here, since I came back in 2016, you know, we said we were going to have a vision and values. And it was going to start with being strong at the quarterback position. And I know when you know, we gave Sam that money and then chased that money and then traded up for, for Carson. There's a lot of the same conversation, and um, I, I just – this is who we are. You know, we want to have a strong room. I, I said something late on Friday night that the media is, you know, giving me a little hard time for, um, so I'm not going to say that. We just want to have a strong room, and we want to have a strong team. We want to we want to have strong depth at, at every area, especially the areas we think – are are really important to winning football games in the National Football League. That's the longest yes I've ever gotten, Howie. That's the longest yes I've ever gotten. What was the what was the question? <laughs> I don't even know. It was a yes question. I love I love talking to you, man. This is so much fun. I appreciate so, that. By, so by the it, way, amazing job with the draft-a-thon, man. Thank that you. was very, very cool. How I, special was that? I appreciate that. It, well, I mean, being part of raising money and let alone uh, $100 million bucks for COVID-19 relief, I mean, that really was amazing. And I do, I got to be honest with you, I feel for Miles Sanders a little bit. He was sitting right there in the draft-a-thon draft room 
with all of us just as Jalen Hurts was selected. And here's this poor kid in his second year, like, you know, everyone's just heaping abuse on him about it, like, what's going on with your quarterback, you know? And and he, he handled it like a pro because we were just having our fun. A lot of it was tongue-in-cheek because, you know, he was He's great. He's a stud, man. He's a stud. That kid's a stud. He is. Lucky to have him. Yeah, I know. He And he did so well last year. Um, so, but that said, did you, did you call Carson? I mean, understand again that, that you, you still picked up the phone and gave him a heads up that, Hey, we're about to take Jalen. Did that happen? You? you know, I'd spoken to him earlier that day and, you know, really the day before and throughout the off season, just kind of telling him what was going on. And I told him that depending on how the board went, that it was a possibility. And, and, and Carson's an unbelievable team guy. I mean, he, he wants what's best for the team. Now, listen, I understand, you know, I, I'm sure everyone's in there and wants what's best for the moment, you know, but that's not really our job. Our job is to protect the organization, protect the team for the long term. And, you know, when you look at, at that position in all of sports, man, it's got to be the most important position in all of sports. Oh, yeah. And I know. And Deion Sanders in the Draftathon live room was just having fun saying, how come they're the only position on the field that can't have competition? You know, like I, 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 I'm a corner, but I'm not allowed to be upset if somebody's you know being drafted at my position. As a matter of fact, I'm I'm supposed to compete with this person. And on top of it, I'm supposed to tutor the youngster. You know, but the quarterback's not supposed to. I mean, like that. Well, you, listen, there's no competition. Carson Wentz is our quarterback. I want to be clear with that. You know, it's about having a strong room. It's about making sure that all of us uh, are are having guys on our team who can come in and play. I mean, you know, you look at it last year, and uh, you even see it when we look about kind of for a short period of time, you know. Um, you know, we had an opportunity, and, um, uh, so much respect for Josh McCown as a player in person, but obviously, you know, we're, we're playing in a playoff game with our backup quarterback. And you look at the Saints this past year, and they go 5-0 and with Bridgewater, and the Chiefs had Mahomes go down and had to get through three games and went 2-1 and one and got home field advantage. So, you know, and how important that is. So it, it's just to us, you know, what would you pay for that if you had to do it? And, and you know, someone told me this, a guy who – is incredibly successful on Wall Street, and he said, you know, when you hedge, you pay for that. And everyone doesn't want to pay for expensive insurance until you need it. Harry Roseman, uh, Executive VP and General Manager of the Eagles, here with me for a few more minutes on the Rich Eisen Show. So much made of the virtual draft, Howie. Um, and uh, now that it's done, and it, it seemed to go without a hitch, Did, did were there... Fewer trades in your estimation or or less activity because of it this year, do you think? I would have said that uh, after Thursday night. Um, maybe would have even said that after Friday night. But, man, Saturday picked up into gear. And um, I felt like it was rolling like nothing else. And, and the reality of it is, like, we're talking to these GMs on their phone anyway. There's no difference. So I didn't think that that was a, a big part of it. And, and you know, it's special. I know, Rich, you got a big family. i got a big family. Yes. And I, I've never been able to share. You know, I don't, I, I've never even watched an Eagles game with my kids, if you can believe that. You know, I don't sit with them during games. I, I don't watch the games with them. I'm right. on the road. And so to be able to experience this with them, it was special special it was an experience that none of us will ever forget yeah i know a lot of a lot of uh, evaluators are saying that so and that and that the format was also uh more enjoyable i guess in for for people to watch because there seemed to be more of a flow um would you want to do it again then what do you think if the league tell says, me where to be and when to be there no i know all that I need I, is to, all i need is to be the poster boy for giving my opinion on what we're doing next <laughs> <laughs> okay i mean but it, i guess it does there is a an ad, i guess again i i enjoyed doing what i did and then i was able to put my kids to sleep like my commute was the stairs you know what i'm saying so yeah yeah my, my commute was the stairs too and uh again you know i it was it was fun um it, it was fun to be able to kind of walk out in between picks. And, and it was also, I think it, it was for my kids to be able to see how that worked. Right. And uh, to see how we're kind of juggling everything and, and to um, kind of appreciate why dad's not home a lot. I, I think that this whole kind of process uh, about how we're working through it, 
it's given us all perspective on kind of balance, work home life balance, and you know maybe maybe FaceTime, maybe guarding guarding your desk, which we all do to some levels. You know, hey, I don't want to go. Uh, you know, I got all these people in here, and, and at the same time though, I, I I miss the people in our building. You sure. know, I miss the people that we work with every day too. So it's a balance. So is it any truth to the rumor that uh, you drafted Sean Bradley in the sixth round because your kids just saw um, Space Jam? Uh, no, yeah, yeah, that 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 uh, they just saw Space Jam and they thought you should draft Sean Bradley and that's why you did it. Is that a true story? Yes. Okay. Yes, true story. Okay, very good. True story. I got I like it. Different spelling, but I guess it's just having another Sean Bradley back in Philadelphia that makes sense, even though he was already there in Temple. I, I know my my kids for some reason, you know, I, I uh <laughs> they, they the minute bowl, you know, my yes. my kids my little boys. I got I got a uh, eight year old and a six year old <laughs> and, and they're like obsessed with like looking at minute bowls because it's bowl bowl. You know, okay. The Celtics. I like uh, it. I, I said once to them, I said, you got to see his dad. And now they, they watch like highlights of Manute Bowl. YouTube's an amazing Respect. thing, man. It really is. Uh, hey, Howie, thanks for the time. Really appreciate it. Thanks, um, thanks for having me, man. Stay safe, everyone, and I look forward to keeping in touch. Right back at you. That's Howie Roseman, the EVP and GM of the Philadelphia Eagles, here on the Rich Eisen Show. Hey, you watched all the way to the end. Thanks for that. Watch more right here. 